I'm Dr. Brant Pedersen, and today I want to discuss with you a common cause of lower back pain that often gets overlooked. And if it's overlooked, the conventional ways of treating lower back pain, like physical therapy and chiropractic, massage therapy, acupuncture, uh, going to your MD, none of those are going to have lasting results. The crazy thing is, is that if properly diagnosed, SI joint instability, and we're going to help you understand exactly what that is, when properly diagnosed, it responds really quickly to the things that you can do at home and the things that you can avoid. I want to start giving you a classic example of a patient that came into my practice with this type of symptom. Uh, she's a 19 year old dancer and uh, theater student in Manhattan. And she uh, initially got this pain by sledding. She was sledding on some really hard icy snow um, bouncing up and down on her sit bones. So this is your spine, the base of your skull here. And here, these bones, they're called your sit bones or medically they're called your ischial tuberosities. Um, when you're sledding, she was bouncing up and down and hitting really hard on those bones. Uh, what she started to have was pain at her sacroiliac joint, um, the joint between your sacrum and your ilium, right? Sacroiliac joint, um, that then traveled into her hip up into her low back and was even causing pain down her leg. She tried for months working with a chiropractor, with a physical therapist, actually with an acupuncturist as well, to get relief and the relief was only transient. It slowly, over months and months and months, got better. And then she bent over to open a drawer and the pain came back. It was, she was right back where she started, so frustrated. Again, she tried going back to chiropractor or physical therapist not getting relief. And then she had a trip coming up to go to Europe, to trek all around Europe. And she was thinking, because of the things that made her pain worse, uh, sometimes walking, certainly standing for any prolonged period of time, like in a line, bending over, carrying anything on her back, and also prolonged sitting, like on a flight or a train or a bus. She was thinking, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to do this trip to Europe. She was back home prior to leaving for the trip, and they found us, her and her mother found us. They came in. I did an exam and what I determined was that she had instability of these SI joints. In diagnosing that, uh, and I'm going to teach you how to figure out the symptoms that many times are associated with it, uh, and then giving her the recommendations that I'm going to tell you in this video, we were able to get her, get her feeling great uh, in less than two weeks. She went and took that trip. She was 100% pain free, able to carry backpacks, do all that stuff. She was rock solid. So that's what I want to share with you today. What we're going to do, where we're headed from here, is I'm going to teach you the anatomy of the SI joint. Because if you don't understand the structures, it's hard to understand how to get them better. Uh, the next thing is, how does an SI joint get injured? Uh, so we're going to talk about the things that most commonly give someone an SI joint or an SI joint sprain or SI joint, sacroiliac joint instability initially. Then how do you spot it? How do you know if this is what you have? And can't diagnose over YouTube, but I can give you some things that might resonate with you and that you can also take to your medical professional to discuss. And then lastly, what are things that can be done by you at home? Um, what are things to avoid that you might have been thinking were the right thing to do that have been leading to more pain? So let's get going. The SI joint, what is it? What can go wrong with it? First off, uh, this is your pelvis, your sacroiliac joint is right here on each side. You can see it here from the front. And this joint has about, it's supposed to have, somewhere between one and three degrees of motion. Uh, every time you take a step, it's supposed to shear back and forth like this. Gives you that sachet in your hips. The SI joint is held together almost exclusively by ligaments. So this is from the Atlas of Human Anatomy by um, Frank Netter, MD. And you can see here, that this is the back of the SI joint, this is the front of the SI joint. So you can see that if those ligaments that are holding the SI joint together aren't doing their job, if they've gotten stretched or strained, um, if we've injured them, that it's gonna be very hard to have stability across that joint. At that joint, there are a lot of muscles that stabilize things, but specifically across that joint is your piriformis muscle. It goes from your lateral hip out here crosses through the sciatic notch and attaches to the front of your sacrum here. That muscle 
and it's important because it can cause pain in our hip, sometimes down the back of our leg. Also, your sciatic nerve runs either underneath or right through that uh, piriformis muscle. And so if the piriformis is trying to take over and be really tight and get trigger points in it, because it's trying to take over the job of the SI joint ligaments that aren't doing their job, uh, then we can get sciatic symptoms. They actually call it piriformis syndrome. So how does your SI joint get hurt? What, what brings it on? Usually it is trauma in nature. A classic, what would seem like an innocuous type of way to hurt it is stepping off of something, a step or a curb that you're not expecting with a kind of straight leg and the jarring that that causes to your pelvis and spine. Another way is a fall. So uh, a, a slip on an icy sidewalk or um, falling doing a sport. You're uh, learning to, to roller skate or rollerblade, right? You're ice skating. Um, you're walking down some stairs and you slip, landing on one of your buttocks, uh, creating a shearing motion into those SI ligaments, actually getting a sprain of those SI ligaments and making them so that they don't uh, provide the stability that they should to the SI joint. The important thing is, and why this is, can be such a big deal, is your sacrum is at the base of your spine, and it is the foundation upon which the whole rest of your spine comes off of. If you have instability on, at one SI joint on one side, and the stability, therefore, is uneven, it's like the foundation of a house. If it's not level, then everything else, the, the walls, the roof, all of those are going to be off. Uh, that's where this can cause problems that lead all the way up the back, but a lot of times we see the pain here. Another thing to consider is people that have ligamentous laxity, right? And we all run on a spectrum there. Some people have really, really tight ligaments. Some people have really loose ligaments. People that have loose ligaments, they usually love things that require tons of flexibility, like yoga or cheer or dance, that type of thing. Um, one way to test is to take your thumb here and see if you can um, pull it next to your arm. Can you tell if I have tight or loose ligaments? That's as far as I can go, right? Uh, also looking at your elbow. If you take your elbow and put it out, does it kind of go backwards, right? Or does it stay? This is as far as I can take mine, right? I have, I'm on the spectrum of having more tight ligaments. Someone that has more loose ligaments, they're going to be at a higher risk for having SI joint sprains or problems. So how do you spot it? How do you know if you have SI joint problems and if you have SI joint instability? First off, work with a good doc and don't give up. If you've been working with a doc and um, just feel like stuff's not going anywhere, look for someone else. Ask for a recommendation of a family or a friend. Uh, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, look us up, Positive Motion Chiropractic. Don't give up. And knowing the stuff that we're talking about in this video will help arm you to be able to have a more uh, informed discussion with your doctor. Some things cannot be reproduced in a video. So in my office, some of the stuff I'm looking for in the examination is tenderness to palpation right over uh, that SI joint region, right? Which would be right here or here. Do they have ligamentous laxity? And we talked through that already. I'm also looking for uh, if I take and do a muscle test of a muscle that is crossing the pelvis, hip region, uh, and then I do a traction across that joint, like pulling the leg, axial tractioning the leg a few times, and then going back and testing that muscle, does that blow out that muscle? And it shouldn't, right? It should uh, stay strong. If it does blow it out, that's an indication for me that there's a problem with those SI ligaments. Uh, things that you can look for that you might have is pain at your SI joints or pelvis or lower back, hip or sciatic stuff that isn't resolving. You're frustrated, you're like, I've tried all these things, just like the 19 year old dancer we talked about in the beginning. If you've had an X-ray and an MRI and you're getting the answer like, everything's all right, there's nothing wrong with you, but you know your body and you know that you're in pain. This doesn't really show up, definitely doesn't show up on X-ray and it'd be very poorly visualized if visualized at all uh, on an MRI. So it's one of those things we got to do a physical exam, a good physical exam to find. Pain that is made worse by prolonged standing or sitting, that sounds like, uh, although it can be other stuff, but that is, is pretty classic for SI joint instability. Uh, it's usually on one side and not on both sides. 
And it's usually something that, um, speaking from a chiropractor's point of view, it's usually something that if we adjust manually, that a person will feel really good relief for, uh, you know, a few hours. And then they say, gosh, my pain's right back. Um, that's not what we're looking for. When we do uh, the specific chiropractic to the joints when they need it, um, the results are lasting. Um, so if you need to go over and over and over and over and the results don't last for very long, it could be that you have instability and a manual chiropractic adjustment where you're getting adjusted by hand um, isn't what's needed in this case. Another thing that we see is someone that has a desire to stretch. Let's say um, they're doing hamstring stretches or they're doing a lunge type stretch or they're doing yoga and they feel like that's what they need. And while they're doing it, um, they feel like they're getting improvement. But when they stop, the pain's still there. It didn't actually help. Lastly, we're gonna talk about, in this next section, what can be done about it, uh, a trochanteric belt and putting that on, right? Uh, helping that, helping to stabilize the joint. And when someone puts a trochanteric belt on, and this is what I see in my office, they go, wow, like this is, this is what I felt like I've needed. Like these months or years that I've had this pain, like this is exactly what I've wanted. And so your body, it's amazing. It has the ability to tell you um, what it needs a lot of times. So a person that puts that on and goes, wow, oh my gosh, um, that's usually a good indication that you've had an SI joint sprain or that you have instability. So what can you do to help your SI joint feel better? When someone has an SI joint sprain, usually when they're given the correct treatment, they notice results really quickly. Work with your healthcare professional, armed with what you now know, uh, could be what's going on with you. They'll be able to help you figure it out. Talk with them and work through their recommendations, but here's what I do in my office to help my patients. First off, I recommend using a trochanteric belt that is different than a lumbar corset brace. Very different. Um, and there's a lot of different quality ones. The ones that I found work the best in my practice is these Sorolla, um, Sorolla trochanteric belts. Uh, I'll put links down in the show notes below uh, to where I get them. An SI belt goes around your greater trochanters. Uh, we loosen the straps back here. And you're gonna take and put it on around the widest part of your hips or your greater trochanters. So we're gonna go here like that. Uh, I'd put this on underneath my pants so you couldn't see it. Uh, and then I'm gonna put a little additional tension on either side. This is usually a thing that when we put it on people, it looks so fashionable. When we put it on people, they go, wow, wow. Like that's what I've been wanting. We discussed that already. Um, so the trochanter belt, it's a great, uh, simple addition. Uh, that can make people feel a lot better really quickly. How often do I have someone wear this? Uh, I have them wear it during their waking hours, and I usually have them wear it for about two weeks. That being said, I've had people wear it as long as six or eight weeks if they had a se really severe sprain. But the cool thing is, is that it doesn't cause atrophying of any of your muscles. So if you had a lumbar corset brace, if you wear that for extended periods of time, it'll actually atrophy your core muscles, right? Making you at more risk of having low back pain or injuring your back or a disc. Next thing is, is avoiding activities that shear the SI joint. So remember we talked about the SI joint moves, you know, one to three, maybe five degrees every time you take a step. Um, when someone uh, is shearing that joint, they're actually putting stress on those ligaments. That's the whole reason we're wearing the trochanteric belt is to try and give some stability to those joints so that the ligaments can heal. So things that can shear the SI joint, uh, doing a lunge, like a runner stretch, uh, doing yoga, like warrior poses in yoga. Stair stepper, riding a bicycle, especially if your seat's down low where your legs are coming up really high. Uh, and one of the best things you can do to strengthen the areas and to help with SI joint instability is to go walk. Not going hiking crazy hills, uh, but walking on flat ground at a reasonable pace. Uh, doing that, we say three to four times a day for 15 minutes. Uh, but if you can only get it in in one hour long walk, that's fine. But that really helps uh, the muscles and the joints there in your pelvis. Something that I use in my practice that I find helps the ligaments to heal and get people back quicker is something by standard process. It's called Ligaplex 1. Again, I'll put a, a link to it down there. Uh, but Ligaplex 1 is just a, a natural food supplement that helps the ligaments to heal. You can use it or not. I just find that it helps things speed along. 
And then chiropractic adjustments. Interestingly, this is a joint that's moving too much, that's hypermobile um, because of a sprain to the joints. So an adjustment by hand, a manual adjustment where you'd hear cracking, as I've been taught, that's contraindicated. That's something that we wouldn't want to do. Um, what we can do to influence the joint if it looks like an, an adjustment is needed um, is do a low force adjustment. So this is an activator tool. It looks scary, but it puts a small impulse in like that. Uh, we can use that to put, get an adjustment. Here is an example of a tiny drop table we use for uh, extremities, but a drop table on a chiropractic table, if your doctor has that, um, comes up like this, and then based on the tension that's set there, it drops. Um, and we can get a good adjustment of the SI joints, but again, it's a low force uh, technique called Thompson drop technique. So that's another way we can adjust if it looks like that's indicated. If you've learned some good stuff from this video, love it if you give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. Also, if you've got other questions, that's what feeds us to make new videos, is helping answer your questions, helping people get healthy. Love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. We're always trying to help people understand their bodies better so that they can feel awesome. Here's to wishing you the best in health. And if you're in pain, that you get feeling better quickly.